This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Uh, welcome to our midweek political roundtable. A lot happening on Wednesday. Joining me are KATV reporters Alicia Dover, Janelle Lilly, and Talk Business and Politics contributor Steve Bronner. Welcome, everybody. Are we rested? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So rested. A lot of running around today. Easy week. <laughs> Easy. All right. House Bill 1228, one of the top political stories of the day. Obviously, a lot of national press here. We're going to allow for two questions on 1228, and uh, you've been getting a lot of comments on Facebook. Tell me a little yeah, bit about that. I've been getting a lot of questions, people saying, why have a state law that directly mirrors federal law? What's the point? Um, and I think that the answer to that we have is that the Supreme Court made a ruling that that federal law does not apply to states. Mm -hmm. So therefore, many states have been prompted to make their own. Yeah, Governor Asa Hutchinson in a press conference today comes out and says, I want the legislature to recall House Bill 1228. Mm -hmm. uh, I want just the federal law in the language of that bill. Sure. Was this a King Solomon decision, Janelle? Yeah, I, th I think it's got to be. And I, he didn't just offer that as an option. He kind of covered his bases here, right? He said, well, they could either recall or we could find a shell bill and amend it or I could have some executive action and executive language after that. And so he kind of had a three path mm -hmm. opening and left it very open for himself. Um, and it was one of those things that, you know, he came out and he told a personal story about his son Seth right. signing the petition mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, said that he thought that was the perfect example of how this issue is dividing generations and also just households. Um, and so I think it was, we'll see what happens next and which path forward. One seems to be an easier path forward yeah. well, than let's the other to that so does the governor get everything he wants this session is this one of the things he will get what he wants he has gotten everything that he wants this session just about and I can he will get what he wants on this <laughs> one too because we're looking for someone to lead us out of the wilderness on this one and he seems to have come up with a pretty decent idea of just mirroring the federal law who would complain about that President Clinton signed that bill into law so that you know it appears that he's he has probably come up with a way forward he had the speaker of the house and Senate President Pro Tem standing next to him, not that close, I noticed, yes. right. <laughs> but they were standing next to him as he made the, the comments, so I, I, I can see him getting what he wants. And I have to say, my job today was to cover the human rights campaign side of it, who've been protesting all week at the Capitol, and I'm pretty sure they had to just kind of crumble up their speeches and <laughs> toss them out, because sure. they weren't expecting yeah. what was to come, what, what the governor had to say, yeah. and, and today at their press conference, they certainly mirrored that and, and showed their thanks. Yeah, and I think that there was some balance that was struck there. Now, I my prediction for what happened happens and you guys disagree or agree with me on this and we've been talking about it mm -hmm. so uh, I think they find a shell bill to put that mirror language in at the federal level mm -hmm. then they don't have to go through a couple of legislative yes. hoops in that respect it comes to his desk while this other one's sitting on his desk he's got two choices he could sign them both and the last one that he signs becomes law he could veto one and sign the one that he wants he's got a couple options in that respect I think Honestly, the reason this speech was so tailored toward the recall is because I really believe that going into uh, the press of this afternoon, you know, that had that seemed like the path forward. From what I'm hearing, just from sources within the Capitol, that those talks kind of broke down in the ninth hour, and uh, so he went forward and did the presser anyways as scheduled. But I would agree that that's probably the clearest path forward. When I was explaining it to some other people, it's because you have a you can recall a bill with a simple majority, but to expunge a vote is two thirds. And yeah. so that's where those hard numbers and getting that many people in line would become difficult, much more difficult than just getting a shell bill, which only requires 51 votes to get through a house and 18th and through it was a clear Senate. from Speaker Gillum and Senator Dismang at the press conference that they don't have the commitments for the votes yeah. that they need. They, they made that very, very clear. So. And it, it certainly seems like the shell bill will be the easiest way forward. And, and just from talking um, to some of of my people that in the governor's office that I've been speaking with, it seems like the exec executive order is not even going to be a necessary action. It's going to get worked out well before it even yep. gets to that. Yep. Watch and see. All right. Let's talk about some other things that are going on in politics in Arkansas. Steve, I'll give the floor to you for maybe some constitutional amendments, some things that have happened. We did have three constitutional amendments go through uh, today. The uh, joint committee that does that is going to the legislature now. Surprisingly enough, after, they had, after the legislative leaders had said there would not be any, Governor Hutchinson said, I want two, mm -hmm. and he's getting his two. So, you know, we're seeing kind of a pattern here. One of them would let the governor keep his job, 
uh, keep his powers when he leaves the state. Currently, the lieutenant governor takes that. His superpowers, Steve. His superpowers. <laughs> so. The second one would uh, allow the state to increase its economic development uh, uh, funding uh, for super projects, mm -hmm. also allow bonding uh, from at local uh, cities and, and municipalities. And uh, the third one would extend the terms for county uh, for county officials, basically. Two years to four years. That's mm -hmm. right. Two years to the extend the length of the, of the term. Okay. What do you think about that? Well, you know, what was interesting is, as you mentioned, they said that they weren't going to push anything through. But before they said that, they said, there's tons of great ones. We're just going to have a hard time picking the mm -hmm. best ones. <laughs> so I was convinced at the very top that there was going to be, there's 40 of them. Surely there must be three that you guys will be referring because you, you know, they've I have from on record from several people saying what great constitutional amendments they had and how can we choose between so many great ones and then to refer nothing I was shocked so I'm a little less shocked that now that the governor's kind of signaled his favorites they're like yes those are the ones we should have referred you know at that point right. and, and even Lieutenant Governor Griffin has been you know, very outspoken about wanting his powers to be taken away so I was not surprised to see that one come up at all I think the term limits one is the one that'll be a challenge though because You've got this distrust of government. You've had these big raises for the sure. legislators yeah. from the Independent uh, Citizens Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's some concern from some folks out there in, in the political echo chamber that there was a little bit of a wool pulled over some eyes in the Amendment 3 last mm -hmm. uh, year that extended those term limits by to 16 years. I, I think this could. I think that one will have some real challenges well, to get through. It's all how they word it. You know, they could call it an ethics law and see what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Who wants to ask the last question or the last topic about uh, former Congressman John Paul Hammerschmidt passed well, I away? Feel like in we should probably ask you about that because you've yeah. had the most experience well, that, with then, the congressman. So. Experience is the word she uses. <laughs> <laughs> when talking Old to us, age is the, is the phrase that she meant to say there. I see how it's going to be. It's very politically correct of you, Janelle. Mm, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, he was a legend in Arkansas politics, the lone Republican in the congressional delegation for many, many years. And uh, I think Uvalde Lindsay, state senator from, uh, Democratic state senator mm -hmm. from Northwest Arkansas, said, you know, Northwest Arkansas and the success you've seen over the last quarter century to 30 years up there really rest on his shoulders. I mean, he helped b bring the money for the infrastructure for the highway, the airport, all of that stuff up there. But you're going to see a lot of people with a lot of uh, condolences and fond memories of John Paul Hammerschmidt. And he catapulted Bill Clinton to where he is as well, because that was Bill Clinton's first race was, I think, in 72 against John Paul Hammerschmidt and he narrowly lost and that propelled him to the Attorney General's office, to the Governor's office, the rest is history. So John Paul Hammerschmidt though, a great guy. Um, all right, well that is all for our political roundtable. Thanks for letting me talk there at the very end. You're all just about to bust out <laughs> laughing. I know how that works. So, so Alicia Dover, Janelle Lilly, Steve Bronner, thank you very much. Keep up with all the latest political headlines at katv.com or talkbusiness.net. I'm Roby Brock, thanks for watching.